Welcome again to a South Center's chat. Please stay tuned. We have a special guest with us today. John Carey is joining us. He is the director of the Governor's Office of Appalachian. We'll be right back. Welcome to this edition of the South Center's Chat. My name is Tom Worley. I serve as director of the Ohio State University South Centers here in Piketon, Ohio. And it's my pleasure to have a special guest with us today, John Carey, who serves as director of the Governor's Office of Appalachia. Welcome, John. Pleased to have you here. Well, thank you, Tom. It's an honor to be here with you. You've been a great colleague and partner for many years. Oh. so. Uh, I think it's great to be here right after the 50th anniversary yeah. of the center. So yeah, yeah. thanks for the invitation. Absolutely, absolutely. John, we'll take that 50th, but it really was just the 30th. So we no. better, we want to be honest men here today. <laughs> but we appreciate you coming and appreciate you mentioning that turned out to be a nice event for us and uh, had, a, had a really excellent turnout of people, including yourself. And uh, thank you for taking the time to be part of it uh, with us. So uh, hopefully we'll get to that 50th anniversary, whether I get to see it or not. <laughs> I definitely don't think I'll be working by then. So, But John, uh, really, uh, you've had a uh, quite a career uh, in politics as well as some other uh, avenues that you're involved with even now as we speak. But I think uh, folks would be interested in a little bit of background about uh, John Kerry. Well, sure. I grew up in the Wellston area, a little village. It's not even a village, a little spot on the road <laughs> called Goldsboro, which is between Wellston and Colton. And uh, went to Ohio University, got a degree in political science, and was fortunate enough to work for Congressman Clarence Miller mm -hmm. from Lancaster. And I worked for him until I became mayor of Wellston in 1988. Okay. And I was very fortunate to have that job for seven years. It's one of my favorite jobs because you could see the right results. Oh, right. right you know, Before you're right, you're yep. right on the firing yeah. line. It's also yep. one of the most difficult yeah. jobs. People don't understand uh -huh. the difficulty of being a local official and yeah. maybe uh, have, not having the resources that other, the bigger cities have. So sure. it was a great experience for me to go on into the legislature. Mm -hmm. I was in the Ohio House for eight years, term limited, and then went to the Senate. Mm -hmm. Um, and represented this region mm -hmm. and went back to the house just for a year and then went to Shawnee State. Uh -huh. And uh, that was a great experience. And then uh, Governor Kasich invited me to be the chancellor for the Department of Higher Education. Oh, yeah. I did that for six and a half years. And uh, Governor DeWine selected me to be a state alternate for the governor's office of Appalachia. So mm -hmm. I've done that be three years in April. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, three years in February. Right. So uh, Governor DeWine is very focused on the region, as mm -hmm. is Lieutenant Governor Eustad. So it's a pleasure to work with them. And uh, a, there's a lot of enthusiasm in our region now, so I'm, I'm excited about it as well. That's, that's great to hear about, and you can sense it a bit, you know. Yeah. And uh, I think that uh, with your experience and being from the region, obviously, you know, is a great asset to have. And then just the legislative experience, the higher education experience, as well as uh, you know, the chancellor of, over the universities, that was quite an uh, opportunity. And uh, so you bring a lot to the table today, and uh, we certainly appreciate the work that you've done and the way in which you've gone about it, John. It's just a, a pleasure to see you at work. And so this thing that you're head of now for uh, Governor Devine, the governor's office of Appalachia, is part of something that is bigger than that at the federal level, is the um, Appalachian Regional Commission. So maybe it would help just to give a broad overview of how that came about and how it uh, functions at the federal level. Sure. Um, in 1964, the Congress created the Appalachian Regional Commission. And um, as you mentioned, President Kennedy visited West Virginia and he mm -hmm. saw the poverty. Mm -hmm. And it includes 13 states, okay. including Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, all the way down south. But you might be surprised it's in New York. All that Appalachian, where the, the Appalachian Mountains yeah, are, that's what qualifies. Yeah. The 13 state region, there's a state's co chair. Mm -hmm. And in uh, 2019, Governor DeWine was a state's co chair. And okay. he'd been the first state's co chair from Ohio in uh, 
a good while, 10 years. Oh, okay. And in this past year, um, Governor Northam from Virginia was the state's co-chair, and next year will be the governor of Maryland okay. will be the state's co-chair. So and there's one a, year appointment or they're one year elected. They're, okay. they're selected by the other governors, okay. And they they alternate between Republican and Democrat. Oh, okay. So I thought the regional out. commission. One of the things I like about it is it's not partisan. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really. I don't know who's a Republican and Democrat most of the time, right? Okay. And it doesn't really matter for what we do because we're investing in communities and trying to help them. Absolutely. Be successful. Absolutely. But um, Gail Manchin is the federal co-chair, mm -hmm. and she actually runs the operations of the Appalachian Regional Commission. At the Washington, D.C. level. In Washington, D.C. Administers the budget item that mm -hmm. uh, is distributed out to the states. Is that mm -hmm. the way it works? Yeah. She receives, she submits the budget. We have input from the states because we're an equal partner with the federal. It's a very unique situation, but she's the one that talks to the legislators. And of course, her husband is Senator Joe Manchin, right. who uh, is very influential at the... Yeah, at the, this very minute, right? At this very minute. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she's a great lady. Uh, she also has an office in West Virginia, in Charleston, okay. Okay. which is a new thing. Oh, okay. So we kind of like that because that's not oh, that yeah. far from us. You've we can access. get there to talk to her sure. if we need to. Sure. And she's already been to Ohio, mm -hmm. and um, she visited many of the counties. Right including uh, Sauda and Pike when she was here. Okay. And uh, we look forward to come back. We'll yes. probably get her up to the northern part of the region. Oh, wow. But she's a very down-to-earth person, and uh, she's challenged us, you know, as the states to work together, mm -hmm. and I think she's going to be talking regionally about those initiatives. But she also re respects the uh, role of the states. Because mm -hmm. um, as the governor's state alternate, mm -hmm. Uh, we vote on certain policies and how certain money is going to be okay. uh, distributed. Okay. Okay. And that's that federal portion. Federal portion. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that money flows into your office at the state level, as well as the 12 other states that are part of the ARC, Appalachian Regional Commission. The Unique to Ohio, there's a match right. to that federal money. Well, um Governor DeWine and the state legislature have, very, have been very supportive of our office. When mm -hmm. I first started uh, as a director, Governor DeWine invited me to the cabinet meeting, mm -hmm. and he says, I want you to work with him to make a uh, difference in Appalachia. And they wow. definitely have taken advantage of that, and mm -hmm. uh, we've taken advantage of those resources. But um, the, we usually see, receive about $6 million for the Appalachian Regional Commission okay. for Mm -hmm. projects and that's matched with about six million of state right in state dollars so mm -hmm. uh that's unique in uh the region we're, we're the only governor's office of appalachia in the 13 states the other states just use their existing offices and it's just another thing that they uh, do through general economic development mm -hmm. right. efforts at the state so uh, oh, the I governor see. has tasked us with focusing on appalachia okay and often we're contacted not just on the programs that we do you know we do water sewer Broadband workforce, those type of projects. Mm -hmm. but we're also asked, for example, the Department of Health, when they're trying to rule out the vaccine, mm -hmm. get everybody vaccinated, they contact us and say, who should we be talking to? Right. How should we approach it differently in Appalachia? Right. And that's just one example of um, some of the other roles that we fill. Right, right. Well, that's, uh, that's an interesting structure. And I think just to go just a, another step into that structure, I think your office at the state level is a pretty lean office. You have a few staff members, but then you rely on the local development districts. To kind of explain that relationship and how sure. that goes in administering the programs. So, yeah, we're a very small office, um, but we have a great network. We partner. Mm -hmm. You're one of our partners. Absolutely. So it's not unusual for me to call you and say, hey, can you help us yeah. with this? And you're always been very gracious to do that. But our funding is actually administered through local development districts. Mm -hmm. So we have the High Valley Regional Development Commission, which is located here in Pike County. Mm -hmm. We have, and it serves this Levin County region. Mm -hmm. Buckeye Hills is in Marietta and serves Levin County. I'm sorry, they serve eight counties. Mm -hmm. Then we have the Omega region, which is a Middle East Government mm -hmm. Association mm -hmm. with Steubenville um, in that region. And then we go all the way up to Youngstown. With the uh, Ashtabula, Trumbull, and Mahoney counties. Right, right. So um, the LDDs are, uh, they're the ones that put together the project. So mm -hmm. the concept is it's from the bottom up. So if uh, there's a project, and since we're in Pike County, I'll use the, if Pike County has a project, 
uh, they put it together. The county commissioners, whole caucuses, and then Piketon, Waverly, or even one of the townships or the county will bring those projects to the commissioners, and they will rank those mm -hmm. and submit them to OVRDC. Mm -hmm. And uh, then once those projects are identified that are going to be funded, they're submitted to us, and we approve right. them. Right, right. So uh, we work with them on trainings. We work with them on tourism. OVRDC mm -hmm. just had a tourism meeting yesterday that was okay. very successful. Mm -hmm. And uh, we work with them on uh, policy. Mm -hmm. You know, and so uh, they're really our feet on the ground. Right, right, right. Well, the bottom-up approach, you know, the local people know what the need is and kind of how the priorities uh, shake out when uh, there are, there's always more projects than there is funding. That's right. just the name of the the way the system works, and uh, that's a good thing, I think. That's a good problem to have, but uh, uh, certainly a uh, uh, degree of efficiency in terms of uh, the way that you work together with even folks like us. And it's uh, probably worth mentioning that the back when this business incubator was built in the mid-2000s, that there was ARC funds that helped uh, with the construction of this facility uh, to help the small business develop and grow here at uh, our little campus at Piketon, Ohio for Ohio State University. So we appreciate that and we've had other projects along the way that have been funded that have been very, very helpful to us. So in Ohio, the 32 counties uh, really do stretch all along the Ohio River except for Claremont and Hamilton. I don't think they are part of the uh, ARC region in Ohio. Uh, but all the way, as you said, Claremont is. Claremont is. Yes. Sorry, Claremont County. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> but got enough hills uh, of Appalachia that far over. So, uh, uh, but uh, the the area uh, obviously the terrain is different. That's what makes it part of Appalachia, and so therefore the kinds of businesses and the kind of things that uh, happen here are somewhat different. But uh, a lot of uh, opportunities, I think, and something that uh, is relatively recent that uh, your office uh, brought to the table, at least that uh, I was able to be involved with a little bit, is something called the Central Appalachian States mm -hmm. and an opportunity to work together uh, across state boundaries in these six states. Get me, Correct me if I'm mm -hmm. wrong, John, but Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, North Carolina. North Carolina is in there, right, yeah. right. So those six states are so-called the middle states of Appalachia. You know, it doesn't go all the way up into New York and then further south into Alabama, Georgia regions. But those six states, and Mrs. Manchin really made an impassioned, uh, spoke uh, passionately, it's probably the better way to put it, about what she sees as the opportunity uh, for these six states that if you look, at a map, she actually had it on the wall of her office and said, you know that map, the way it looked in 1960, where the distressed counties are, which means the lowest income and the highest poverty rates, you lay, overlay that with currently, it's still those same six states and said, we want to use this opportunity. So you can share more about that opportunity and how it fits in with some other funding and how she's leading this effort with the six states along with you and the other uh, states to put this thing together? Well, I think like uh, like many of us, uh, Mrs. Manchin has a heart for Appalachia. Mm -hmm. And she's from West Virginia. Right. She's from Logan County, West Virginia. So okay. she lived, you know, she grew up okay. in those distressed areas. And West Virginia has, West Virginia and Kentucky have the most distressed counties. Is, it, is every county? No, every county in West Virginia is part of the ARC, but, but not, not every county is distressed. distressed. Like in Ohio, we have 32 counties, but we have five that are distressed. Got it. And those five, just quickly, is Adams, Athens, Meigs, Monroe, and Noble. Mm -hmm. So we do devote a lot of resources through our state programs to those dates. But uh, Mrs. Manchin, you know, she said, I think in her speech, we've done a lot of good work. But we need to move the needle. She mm -hmm. challenged us. Mm -hmm. We really haven't. Uh, we do work with West Virginia and uh, Kentucky and Pennsylvania uh, on a limited basis on projects through power, which is for co-impacted mm -hmm. communities. Mm -hmm. And we work on all the state projects. But this was new uh, that we each were invited to have a team. Each state was invited to have a team. You were part of our team in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Um, 
and we talked about other states, and we had some back and forth. I think we didn't necessarily agree. We agreed that we wanted to help distressed counties, but I think different people had different uh, viewpoints. But there was a lot of discussion. And on Ohio's team, we included uh, agriculture, and that was one thing that I was really pleased that Mrs. Manchin talked about mm -hmm. was uh, focusing on agriculture. That was our roots, and that was something that – uh, we need to focus more on, and mm -hmm. we really haven't mm -hmm. as much mm -hmm. as we should, I think, in Appalachian Regional Commission. So uh, she brought that to the table as one of the goals. Mm -hmm. And the other part was uh, uh, manufacturing and uh, workforce mm -hmm. were, were part of those. So we, we convened a team from the Stress Counties in mm -hmm. Ohio, and uh, we talked about it, and our team was very good um, – we had a very strong team. I'll be, I'll be prejudiced and say Ohio had the best team. Okay. <laughs> That's <laughs> but, okay. We're safe here. To... <laughs> but um, what we ended up doing through the conversations, and this was really back to the grassroots model, it wasn't my vision or the governor's right. vision. It was a discussion amongst all these mm -hmm. folks from the different states to go with outdoor recreation, that that was the best opportunity that we had, and then we could add community development such as downtown and mm -hmm. agriculture mm -hmm. and broadband and tourism, of course, as part of outdoor recreation. Right. That could be the sector that we focused on mm -hmm. and uh, would give us the best opportunity to be funded. And Mrs. Manchin has been talking to the head of the Economic Development Administration, which is funding this, and this is one of the big grants. Right. But even with the big grant, when you're – spreading it amongst six states, yep. it will have, uh, hopefully will have a great impact, but it's not, it's not that um, everybody's going to receive a lot of money in each town. Right. But right. it sets the infrastructure together yeah. that uh, sets up our region as uh, being more successful, making progress, mm -hmm. real progress and change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're excited about it. One thing about that team I just want to say is that um, – it led us to talking to you and having you a member of our team, which mm -hmm. Ohio State University Extension is a great resource. So is a great resource. So I think it opened up some greater conversations. Talked to the president. Had a chance to talk right, to the president right. about this mm -hmm. and the dean. So uh, we've talked to the Department of Agriculture in Ohio. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it generated some ideas and, and discussion and momentum for us, even if we're not funded for mm -hmm. the CDA grant, yeah. I think we'll have other partnerships sure. that we can build out of right. that right. that we didn't have before. So right. Right. For, to me, it was a very worthwhile exercise. Yeah. yeah. Well, I understand, you know, that the, um, you know, where we ended up in this planning phase, I, which is the purpose of the initial proposal, is to bring these groups and more larger groups together, you know, to really plan the actual implementation side where it really takes the larger uh, potential funding that is out there from the Economic Development Administration, as you say. That uh, agriculture, you kind of how do you link that to outdoor recreation? But when you think of outdoor recreation, you're thinking about drawing visitors to your attraction. And, of course, you know, Ohio has beautiful hills, and we have quite a recreation industry in the Hawking Hills, which is right dead smack in the middle of the whole Appalachian region of Ohio, a lot of activity there, but that can be uh, expanded. And I think that anytime people are going out on a vacation or a trip to the woods or whatever, there's going to be the desire for some local food, some local products. Absolutely. I think that's the agricultural tie, uh, whether that be through a farmer's market or an on-farm market or perhaps an agritourism operation that if you have little ones and or yourself, you know, are interested in what goes on on a farm and some of the activities that get uh, created to uh, present, uh, you know, some uh, activities that are interesting to kids of uh, shooting pumpkins out of uh, pipes and so <laughs> forth and uh, uh, various mm. uh, other kind of activities that uh, happen. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities for agriculture in this overall vision uh, of outdoor recreation. So we're excited to be part of that, and uh, hopefully we'll get to see uh, further activity as we go forward on that, John. It's a great opportunity. So uh, the uh, time schedule, I think, we'll find that we have uh, the planning phase, but then the other comes right along in the spring, I think, right. that uh, the the larger proposal, and so there's a lot of work to be done yet to really 
tap into the larger uh, funding from EDA. So we look forward to continuing the work on that. Are there some other things happening uh, out of your office that you want to share a little bit about, uh, anything specifically or uh, potentially? I think uh, I think we're ahead of ourselves, and I don't want to get too far into it, but uh, there may be some uh, uh, potential uh, coming that you may touch on if you care to. If not, why? what we're um, thinking of in terms of uh, ongoing activities that are involved. Sure. Well, and one thing the governor and lieutenant governor is really focused on is broadband. Okay. And our office works very closely with Broadband Ohio. Peter Voderberg's the chief, and mm -hmm. he checks in regularly with the lieutenant governor and governor. And, mm -hmm. and uh, as you can imagine, he has a very challenging oh my. position. But he's, the, the governor and the legislature are making progress. A broadband. Of course, we'd like to see it happen yesterday. Sure, sure. But um, there's been funding approved by the legislature to help the providers do the middle mile, and okay. they're accepting those applications now. We use uh, some of our money for broadband. We have a power project with Buckeye Rural Electric that they're mm -hmm. working on, and which would provide more broadband access to Good. this area. They wouldn't provide the broadband themselves, but they could use their Poles to run the fiber and we, optic, uh, and we find that's really promise. That's a really promising. Sure. It makes sense. You sure, know, that's one of the reasons why Rural Electric uh, was created to go to those places that were hard to get to. That's right. Um, the other thing that uh, you know we always focus the heart of ARC and Appalachian Regional Commission is on water, sewer, and uh, we do more workforce and mm -hmm. things like that. But so. Uh, when we talk about all those issues that are, you know, life issues, like yeah. quality of life, access to water, mm -hmm. we worked with the Voinvid School on mapping all 32 counties where there isn't access to clean drinking water. Okay. So, uh, and one of the reasons we did that is because we wanted to elevate the issue, and we wanted to try to identify what the cost is. This much, mm -hmm. mostly a like, lot like broadband. Because a lot of people don't have broadband, they don't have water. I don't yeah. know. Uh, I don't know. You know, you shouldn't have to make a choice. Right. Right. And then, uh, so when you're talking about all these things, some people may ask, "Well, why are you talking about tourism?" Mm -hmm. You know, it's an economic development engine. It does bring jobs. It's a great thing. It's part of preserving our heritage, especially our historical assets. Sure. But the other reason that uh, we've really focused on in Ohio is telling our own story. Because yep. we get a lot of negative press from outside the region, and they've kind of told the story, which leads to some unfortunate mm -hmm. stereotypes. You're right, right. And we don't want, you know, we can't deny what our problems are, but we want to tell our story about what the assets are oh, and how yeah. we're a good place to invest. Absolutely. And uh, why the people choose to live here. Sure. And... Uh, the uh, culture and the things that we have to offer. Mm -hmm. So that's I think that's important to us. We sure. work very closely with Ohio Tourism, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we've done some uh, things like invest in a blogger. It's kind of out of my league, to be honest, but the blogger was down in Portsmouth a couple weekends ago oh. and visited the region, and they talk about fun things to do and okay. post yeah. pictures and those type right. of things. Okay. So mm. reaching a different yeah. audience, right. and that's going really well. Yeah. Uh, we were able to get uh, stories in Ohio Magazine about long weekends in Appalachia. Sure. And it's not it's marketing to the outside, but it's also marketing to our folks because yeah. a, a lot of the folks here don't realize the great assets that we have yeah, in the region. So it's exciting. Uh, I think that um, we're going to see some good projects uh, for that. Ripley and, uh, you know, with the Rankin House. Right. They submitted right. a project for a boat ramp and some okay. other features okay. in Ripley. Mm -hmm. and by the way, if you haven't been to the Rankin House, I, I would have. recommend you. I, I recommend yeah. the audience members go and visit there. Yeah. So we have a lot of, uh, you know, it's not all about the... Uh, infrastructure, it's also about uh, building our community and capacity, right. building pride right. in our region. Right. right. You used the word power a minute ago. Could you, could you elaborate just a little bit yeah. on the power program? Yeah. Power uh, is a grant program for bigger grants, mm -hmm. and it's for co impacted communities. And there's 32 counties, you know, all 32 counties in Ohio are co impacted. Okay. So uh, the grant applications are due. Next April, mm -hmm. uh, it's for a $1.5 million. It's more regional, so it's not 
uh, you know, a village or, uh, you know, it's more of a regional impact. Right. So we, you can think about that. But if you're interested, then contact your local development sure. district or you can contact our office. We'll sure. get more information. I think we've been co-applicants or support written support letters. I don't think we've ever applied directly ourselves, John, but uh, several things have uh, gone forth that are uh, very good projects. And as you mentioned, I think the key is the coal impact, which if you mentioned all 32 counties are, are eligible. Well, John, I think that uh, our time is uh, winding down here, but uh, such a pleasure to visit with you and learn more about your work through the ARC and then through the office here in Ohio, the Governor's Office of Appalachia. And uh, certainly we're excited about this uh, six-state project and uh, what may come out of that and the potential of that. So we're uh, really looking forward to staying in close contact and keeping up to speed and being part of that planning process uh, on behalf of some agriculture as well as the and when you mention agriculture and even back to the broad pan we have a center for cooperatives here at uh, South Centers and I think there's some opportunities for further work uh, in both the tourism agriculture and the broadband in uh, the cooperative uh, area as well and we got really a good staff so John again it's a pleasure to have you with us today appreciate the uh, update on your work here in Ohio and we wish you the best uh, as time goes forth one last thought if you have it thank you for having me and uh, I'm proud to be from Appalachia <laughs> well we're proud that you're from Appalachia too and uh, we uh, enjoy uh, this part of the country and uh, grew up not very far from here uh, just over the line from Appalachia and Fayette County so uh, but at heart, I identify a lot with everything that happens in this part of the state. So until next time, we'll be signing off. The next South Center chat will uh, be forthcoming.